right, today I'm going to go over four high pressure sales techniques that more than likely you've been forced to learn from your sales manager, some sales guru that is actually causing you to lose a lot of deals that you could be making. All right, so you want to pay attention right over here. You want to avoid these like the plague if you want to become a top 1% earning rep in your industry. I'm going to go through these. There's actually a lot more, but these are the top four. First of all, Go down to the bottom of this video, hit the subscribe button. That's probably important for you. Hit the subscribe button and to the right of that, or maybe the left, I don't know, somewhere in there, there's like a little bell. That's your notifications button. Hit the notifications button as well so you get notified by YouTube every time I post a new training video, which I typically do two to four times a week. Number one, you want to stay away from what is called logical based traps. Now what I mean by that is asking questions that force the prospect to give you the answer that you want them to say. I hate to say this, your prospects are not dumb. They know when you're trying to force them to say what you want them to say to actually close them. Those are manipulative questions, all right? So like I said, you don't wanna ask questions that force them to say the answer that you want. Most of them know what you're trying to do, okay? Now, if you do have some prospects that still buy, because you're gonna lose a lot of people because it's gonna trigger a lot of sales resistance, but let's say that you push and pressure and force them to say what you want them to say, the problem that you're gonna have is you're gonna have a lot of them that will cancel after you leave, okay? They'll want a refund or they will charge back. So if you're having quite a bit of cancels, you know, there's companies that we train, let's say if you sold solar or roofing that they would make a sale and then 50% of them would actually cancel before it ever got installed. That's because they've been forced to use logical based trap manipulative questions that put a lot of high pressure on the prospect. So when you leave, they just cancel because you're not there anymore, right? They can cancel anytime they want. Now, trying to get them to say yes seven to 10 times, and if you do that, they're gonna have a 71% chance more likely they're gonna buy. Have you ever heard that? Do you know where that came from? What study have you read that actually proves that that's true? Because as every single sales book says that, but where did it come from? What study, what, what behavioral scientist has showed that? You know, when I did research on that, there is none. I actually did that back in college with uh, my behavioral scientist. We actually looked that up. There's literally no study that says this, none anywhere. Do you know where it came from? A sales training company back in the 1950s wrote it in a book because they did a study on it. A company that trains that did their own study that that was proven right. I don't know, but it could be a little bit biased there, right? There's literally nothing that says that this is true. And I'm gonna show you what I mean by this, all right? Uh, typically, when you use manipulative questions that force them to give you the answer you want, you're gonna trigger a lot of sales resistance, which causes the prospect to emotionally shut down and stay surface level. And as you know, if your prospect stays surface level, and when you ask questions and they give you vague generalized answers, how many of those actually buy at the end? Very few. That's why you're having to play the numbers game, whereas you could be playing the skills game. I'll talk about that in a second. Now, uh, manipulative questions like that you're forcing them to answer whichever way, like an answer that's good for you. Uh, John, do you want the red one or the blue one? You don't even ask them if they want it or what their thoughts are or how they feel it's gonna help them. You just say, do you want the red one or the blue one? Uh, do you wanna take delivery Monday at one or Tuesday at two? Like you're literally forcing them to choose what you want them to say. Most people will push back. Now, if they say, oh, I want the red one, that means that they had already decided to buy a long time before based on your conversation. It's not like they decided to buy just because you asked them that manipulative question. Because when you ask them a lot of this, they'll say, oh, I didn't say I'm ready to buy, or oh, I need some time to think it over, or I need to talk with my spouse. So be careful of those type of manipulative questions or forcing them like obvious questions, like, like rhetorical questions where you know the answer. Like, well, you wanna make more money, right? Or you wanna scale your business, right? If you sold business consulting that helps business owners scale, or uh, let's say if you sold solar, I mean, you wanna save money on your electric bill, right, John? Well, of course I do, duh. See, that's what they think. They emotionally shut down. Or let's say if you sold life insurance, I mean, you wanna protect your family when you pass away, right, Mary? Okay, uh, that's an obvious answer. You're like, you're forcing them to say what you want them to say. Prospects feel manipulated when you use those techniques. So instead, you wanna know what to do, you might wanna watch here, right? So, 
instead of getting them to say yes, like, are you open to having a conversation, which is not bad, I'm going to show you how to get them to say no, which leads them to say yes when you're closing, okay? So I might say, instead of saying, are you open to X, Y, Z, I might say, are you opposed to having a conversation around that? Are you opposed to looking at that maybe differently than what you have in the past? Opposed, it's hard for the prospect to say, yes, I'm opposed, okay? They'll be like, no, I'm not opposed. What do you have? Or no, I'm not opposed. What's on your mind? So sometimes no, getting them to say no is way better than getting them to say yes because no leads to the ultimate yes, which is buying what you're offering, all right? Uh, instead of saying, do you want the red one or the green one when you're trying to close or some type of option close, you might lean in and say, do you feel like this could be the answer for you? Now, feel is the keyword. Don't say think. That puts them into left brain logical based thinking. You want them to right brain emotional based thinking. Do you feel like this could be the answer for you? Notice that verbal pause. Now, they're either gonna say, yes, I do, or they're gonna say, I do, but, and then they tell you the real concern, which I'm okay with either of those. At least they tell me the real concern. I'm not forcing them. Because if I say, do you want the red one or the blue one? Well, I didn't say I was ready to buy yet. Now you've triggered sales resistance. Okay, but by just me relanguaging it, where I'm asking more of an open, like this type of question, do you feel like this could be the answer for you? Okay, and don't trigger any sales resistance. They'll say, yeah, I do, but I don't have the money. Or yeah, I do, but I need some time to think it over. At least I don't trigger sales resistance because if I trigger sales resistance and the emotion shut down, way harder to help them overcome it. But if they tell me the real concern without me triggering sales resistance, their guard's still down, and now it's easier, way easier to help them overcome that. There's a lot more to that. I'm just giving over on that one. Now, this one's really important. You want to pay attention to this one. Setting an agenda. How many have you, ha, you've been taught that, right? You got to set the agenda at the beginning of the call to force them to either say yes or no. Let me show you why you're losing all the deals that you could be making. I'm going to show you how to relanguage this where it doesn't sound so hardcore, all right? You've heard this. It's some form of this. Yeah, hey, the way this call is going to go, right? You're setting the agenda. Hey, John, the way this call is going to go is I'm going to ask you some questions and depending on your answers, that'll tell me if you're a good fit for what we do. And at the end, if, if you think this is a, a good fit and we feel you're a good fit for our company, I'll show you how to, to get started in the XYZ. And then you say something like, fair enough. Now, most of your prospects are going to say, yeah, that's fair enough. They agree with you, but you know what's going on in their brain? they start to emotionally shut down. They stay surface level and you're gonna notice when you start asking questions, they give you vague, generalized answers and then you get a lot of objections still at the end. They still say, I need to think it over. I need to talk to my spouse. I need to talk with the board. I need to talk with my department head if you sold B2B. Because the reason why, do you know why they stay surface level and emotionally shut down? Because they feel like if, if they're gonna answer your questions truthfully and open up to you emotionally, that you're gonna use that against them to try to hard close them at the end. Because you're doing this so early in the conversation, you don't really have much trust or credibility two or three minutes in when you're trying to set an agenda, all right? What it does, like I said, emotion shuts down, triggers sales resistance. So instead, you wanna use this. I'm gonna show you how to relanguage this because if you, can set what we call a status frame, an NEPQ status frame at the beginning, your prospects know at the end there could be next steps, so they know there's gonna be a next step, but it also causes them to keep their guard down, which emotionally causes them to wanna to open up. So let me show you, I'm gonna show you the tone how to use this. Yeah, and John, this, this call is really more for us. Say us instead of me or my or I. You wanna be us focused or we focused, all right? Yeah, this call is really more for us to find out kind of more about what you're using for X, Y, Z. And, and I would say, you know, what kind of what you're using for X, Y, Z and, and the results you're getting from that compared to maybe where you're wanting it to be to kind of see what the gap looks like. And then, you know, towards the end of the call, if you feel that, hey, this might be what you're looking for, we can talk about possible next steps. Would that help you? Now, look at what I did there. It's basically 
setting an agenda, we call it a status frame, but it's more neutral. It's not so assumptive. It's not pushy or posturing. We're more neutral, so it keeps our guard down. Now, depending on what you sell, this is just generic here. Okay, did you see my hands? Kind of what you're using for X, Y, Z, the results you're getting from that, notice how I have my hands here, compared to where you're wanting to be, so we can see what that gap looks like. See how I just created a gap visually in their mind? Even if I'm on the phone, I'm doing that with my hands because it affects my tonality. My body language affects my tonality, all right? And then look at here. Then at the end, if you feel, notice feel not think. We wanna keep them in emotional based thinking. If you feel that this might be, might be is a neutral word, okay? Because if I said, if you feel this is what you're looking for, I'm gonna show you how to sign up, a lot of people are like, well, I'm not necessarily ready to buy after this, but let's see what you have. You'll trigger a lot of A-type personalities that will do that. But if I say that this might be what you're looking for, we can talk about possible next steps. Would that help you? No one is ever going to say, no, it would not help me to talk about possible next steps. See, it's all neutral. I, I will never trigger any sales resistance by setting this type of frame with any type of personality. Notice how I said that then. Would that help you? That's a curious tone. We're gonna to talk about your tone here in just a second. One of the most important principles. Now, the next one, we see this a lot. Hardcore uh, pressure techniques that a lot of you have been forced to learn that you think works because you make a sale here and there, so it's kinda of like golf. You suck at 17 holes, but then you hit that one hole and you're like, oh, I'm kinda of good at golf. Uh, you just got lucky, all right? Every blind scroll eventually finds a nut, as my good friend Brian Tracy would say. So you use a lot of assumptive languaging too early in the conversation. Now, we can use some assumptive languaging more towards the end when we built a huge gap. We have more trust. We have more credibility. You start assuming too early, you're going to trigger massive sales resistance in a lot of prospects, all right? So it's things like this. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to get started here. First, you're going to go to... Now, that's kind of more at the end, but you're still assuming here. You're not even asking them what their thoughts were, how they feel, do they feel it's what they're looking for. You just go right in. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to get started. I think you're going to love it, and you go right in. And a lot of times, the prospect says this. Oh, wait, I, I didn't say I was ready, or I didn't say I was going to buy today. And now what did you do? Wall comes up, really hard for you to overcome it now. You're dead in the water. Instead, I might say this. Okay, so good first call. Let's say if I'm in B2B sales and... Uh, well, actually, no, let's just do this. Okay, so good first call. It, it looks like we covered the basis of what you were looking for in X, Y, Z. Really, the next step would be, you go over the next steps, A and B and C, here's how you pay, blah, 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 and then at the end, would that be appropriate? Would that be appropriate? See how neutral that is? Would that be appropriate? Would that help you if we did that for you? Okay, that's neutral languaging. Even if they say, well, you know, I'm not sure. I just need some time. It doesn't trigger sales resistance. And they tell me their real concern. And now I can help them overcome it because I didn't cause a huge wall to be built up that I now I have to tear down. Just makes selling way more easier and way more profitable. You make a lot more sales, all right? More to that in a second, all right? Here's some more examples here prospect. You know, Mary told me you guys are great and, and you can help us with, let's say you get a referral. Okay. The prospect calls you and they're excited to talk to you and you start getting really excited. And then have you ever noticed that then they just don't buy sometimes? Like you get a prospect or a referral calls you, they're all excited. Like you help my friend, blah, blah, blah. And they start talking and you get really excited and you kind of go into telling them what you do. And they're like, Oh, that sounds good, but I need some time to think about it. And then it's over and you're like, what? I thought this was a done deal. So you want to, instead of like jumping in with your solution really early, is you kind of almost want to kind of push them away a little bit that causes them to pull you back in because they view you as like unbiased, like you're more there to help them, right? Yeah, uh, so most people would say, so let's say they called you like that, right? Yeah, Mary told me you guys are great and, and can help us with, you know, X, Y, Z. And most sales reps are like, oh yeah, awesome. Let me show you how we can do that for you. You're really going to love this. Like, in fact, Mary loved it. And then you go into it, you win some of those, but then some you end up losing. You're like wondering why. So instead, you want to kind of push back a little bit. They said, oh, you know, I'm really excited to talk to you. Mary said you could help us with X, Y, Z. You helped her with. And then I might say, well, yeah, possibly. Um, and, you know, just because, you know, we were the right fit for her doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be the best thing for you. I'd have to understand more about 
and then I start going into my questions. Yeah, possibly. Um, so let's say if they're like, yeah, we really want to work with a huge company that has your track record. Let's say you get a referral like that from just a random prospect and you're a big company that has a big track record. Well, possibly. Um, just because we're a big company with a really successful track record doesn't necessarily mean that it's the best possible solution for you. I'd have to find out a little bit more about what you're kind of looking to do and then I can go over some things that we could possibly do for you. Would that help you? See, it's kind of like I pushed them back a little bit and you know what that does to them? They're like pulling you back in, okay? Because now they don't view you as like a salesperson trying to sell them something. They view you more as like an expert because experts don't need tons of clients. They already have tons of clients. They don't need your business. They're, you're coming to them, right? Like you're the expert, the prospects come to you, the prospect has the problems. You have the solution to solve this. So you kind of push them back. Well, just because we're a, a huge company with that track record doesn't necessarily, that's always the best move for you. I'd have to know a little bit more about, and you're gonna watch them, their guard goes down completely and they're like, come back to me, come back to me, I want you to help, all right? So let's keep going here, I'm gonna show you a few more things, all right? This is one of the most important. You probably don't know that a high pressure tactic is the way you're using your tone. Because you're so excited when you start talking to a prospect, you're so enthusiastic. Now, does that mean you shouldn't be excited about what you sell? No, but keep it to yourself. Keep it more internal rather than external, where you're like really enthusiastic, like the used car salesman that runs out there, I'm so excited you came in. What do you do when a really excited salesperson approaches you? Your guard goes up, right? Because you feel like they're just trying to close you or sell you. Now, if you're doing that to salespeople, can you imagine what your prospects are doing to you because you were taught this? So your tonality is too excited, all right? I'm so excited that you're on this call with us today. I know we can help you with X, Y, Z. You're really going to like our services. And your tone is like a high-pitched tone. Okay, you don't want to do that because when you have a high-pitched tone, that communicates to your prospect that actually triggers fight or flight. It like goes into the reptilian part of the brain. They hear that type of high pitch sound and they're built in to like protect themselves emotionally from salespeople. Like for decades, they've been sold to all the time, marketing messages, salespeople are always trying to sell them. And most of them sound really, really excited. I don't mean be boring, but you want to be neutral, like right in the middle, like an expert would collective confidence, all right? So you don't want to trigger fight or flight mode. So here's the different tones that you would use, all right? And I'm going to show you this. Let me get a drink of water here. All right. Now, there's certain questions you're going to ask that you need to ask more of a curious tone. Okay, I'll just give you an example here. Now, this would be what's called considered a NEPQ connection question. Takes the focus off you, puts it on your prospect. Now, Mary, when you were talking to my associate, John, what did you guys go over that really caused you to, you know, want to look into this more? John, when you were talking with my associate, Mary, what was it that you guys went over that really caused you to want to look into this more? See, that's a curious tone. And your prospect interprets your tone. So your, the way your prospect interprets the meaning behind your questions is by your tone. That's the first thing the brain hears, not the words you're saying, but the tonality. That's how they interpret the, uh, the meaning behind everything you're asking. Now, there's also a confused tone. Let's say the prospect says, hey, I just really need some time to think it over. You can lean in in a confused tone and say, think it over? Think it over? See, I'm acting confused, like I'm not understanding. Now, do you know what that does? Uh, well, the reason why I want to think it over is it's a big decision. Big decision? Yeah, it's just a lot of money. See how I can just literally repeat back the word in a confused tone and the prospect starts to open up? That's a way to clarify what they mean to find out the real concern. That's a whole nother trend, but that's a confused tone. Now, we can also use a challenging or skeptical tone. This is called an NEPQ consequence question. Well, what are the consequences if you guys don't do anything about this? Now, we're not gonna ask consequence questions the first two minutes of a conversation because you don't have much trust or credibility. But three-fourths of the way into that conversation or sales process, we can challenge them more because we have more trust. We've built a gap. We have more credibility. What are the ramifications if your company keeps ignoring XYZ issue? 
See, that's a challenging tone, all right? And then we have a concern tone, a tone that shows more empathy. Let's say that they're, you know, you've talked to this prospect several times, they're just not moving forward, you can't help them overcome their objections. You can lean in, put your hand on your chest. It's a body language technique that signifies your concern for them. Okay, I'll teach you that in another training. Mary, what's, what's really holding you back from moving forward so that you can? And then you're going to repeat back what they said they wanted. Let's say if you sold solar, for example, trained tens of thousands in that space too. Mary, what's really holding you back from moving forward so you're not forced to keep paying the rate hikes? See what I did? I put in the negative consequence. Let's say if you sold life insurance. Cindy, what's really holding you back from moving forward so you can financially protect your kids when you do pass away? Or I could even shorten it. What's really holding you back from moving forward? See, that's a concerned tone. All right? Concerned tone. Very important. All right. Hope that helped you. You want to avoid those four high pressure sales techniques at all cost. I showed you a little bit about what to do instead. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. We're going to go through a lot more in different training videos. And if you want to start getting more hors d'oeuvres, even more nibbles, make sure you go to our Facebook group, salesrevolution.pro. You're welcome for that one. Join our free Facebook group. Go to www.salesrevolution.pro. We should have a link on here somewhere, salesrevolution.pro. Right when you join the salesrevolution.pro Facebook group, because we've got thousands of entrepreneurs in there, thousands of salespeople like you, thousands of coaches, consultants, executives in there that want to sell more. Right when you join, check your DMs because we're going to message you. Some of my team's going to message you a free training called the NEPQ 101 mini course. It's going to give you a list of different questions and phrases you can use in any sales situation. That alone is going to help you sell more than what you're doing now. And we go live in the Facebook group about three to four times a week with different subject matter trainings, different Q and A's, different client interviews that will also help you sell more. Join the Facebook group salesrevolution.pro. See you there.